This is an ABC News special report. Thailand Rescue, Race Against Time. Hello from New York, I'm Dan Harris alongside Paula Ferris and we are coming on the air with some great news about the rescue operation to save members of that young soccer team and their coach trapped in a cave in Thailand for more than two weeks. And this was the scene just outside the cave where it's already Sunday night as four of the players were brought to safety just a few hours ago in what's been a complicated and risky operation. They were taken to the hospital by ambulance and by helicopter. They're now being evaluated and treated. The boys ranging in ages 11 to 16 were extracted at a pace much faster than expected. It's really an incredible development. Divers had been standing by to make this rescue. They started the operation overnight. They started bringing the first boys out late last night, Thailand time, which was early this morning here, U.S. time. They came, those boys, from nearly three miles deep in, inside that cave. Ed, we want to show you a virtual view of the treacherous route that the divers took them through in an operation that will continue in the hours to come. Again, four have been rescued, eight remain along with their soccer coach. So let's go to ABC's Matt Gutman on the scene in Chiang Rai, Thailand. Uh, Matt, what are you hearing now? It was a stupendous day for these people, Dan and Paula. So what they're doing right now is trying to regroup. And you may be able to see some traffic behind me. They are setting more oxygen tanks back into that cave area. They've got to replenish the supplies. They're also now pumping additional oxygen in there. There's some concern that the oxygen levels have dipped. And we don't expect them to begin extracting additional boys, those eight boys left plus the coach, uh, probably for another six or seven or eight hours, uh, not until morning. They were going to regroup and try to go at this again. Now, the way they did it, as you described, is incredibly complex. It's this sort of choreographed dance underwater in this cave, miles inside. So each one of the boys had two divers with him. They were conveyed along this serpentine route underground, some of it underwater uh, for miles. They stopped at certain chambers where there's much more air to regroup and try to assess the boys' health, and they moved on. The first one came out at about uh, 5.40 p.m. local time. The next one came out about 20 minutes later. Then an hour and a half or so later, the other two boys came out separated by about 10 minutes. And, you know, I can tell you at this intersection here where we've seen so much activity, there's just jubilation. There was a line of soldiers right here who saluted the rescue workers when they came out. It was such an amazing moment. But you guys have mentioned this. This is an incredibly torturous and difficult thing to do, right? So not only do they have to travel for hours on end to get through that route, but the ceiling of the cave is filled with stalactites, jagged quartz rock. Uh, they've got to deal with the water and obviously the possible fear of these boys panicking while they have these full face masks on their face. But it seems that everybody did splendidly well, and obviously those boys are now recovering at a hospital, likely suffering from some sort of exhaustion or something. But clearly a, a very difficult ordeal for them for the past 16 days now. Dan and Paula. Yeah, so far, Matt, thank you. So far it has been a best-case scenario, mm -hmm. but they are not out of the woods yet. Let's send things over to James Longman, who's also on the ground there. And, and James, this continues to be a race against time. We know that they've taken a little bit of time off. Eight boys remain in that cave as well as their coach, but it's a race against time. And, and it looks like the rains are coming. Yeah, that's been the whole issue from the very beginning, Paula, uh, to beat the rain. And the whole issue is the water level in that cave. From the very start, at least when we knew that these boys were in the cave, because remember, to begin with, for the first few days of this, they were lost and there was no sign of them. But uh, the rescuers discovered their, that they were there. There was real uh, jubilation in the camp, which where everyone was, was based. Uh, and then the realization that actually they had to be gotten out and that the aim was to bring down the water and that was a big big problem for the last few days even though the camp was dry it seemed that they weren't able to really bring it down as much as they would have liked it was being brought down by one or two centimeters a day they had something like 60 pumps they had a one pump had something like 400 horsepower uh, working around the clock they put dams in to try to get the water diverted away from the cave um, it seems that uh, water was brought out from some of the more difficult parts of the cave and, and, and most importantly, they got rid of uh, some of the rock which was preventing the boys from being able to 
come out without having to dip their head against the water. The rescuers said from the very beginning they did not want these boys to have to fully submerge themselves for extended periods of time. They wanted to bring them along the top of the water. So that was a real breakthrough. They used these underwater jackhammers to break down the rock. But now, as you can see, the rain has returned. Um, and it's unclear what, what that's going to do to uh, the situation inside the cave if they've built enough dams to make sure that this rain won't make a difference. But remember, these caves sit under an enormous mountain range. It is basically uh, a, a natural drainage system for a jungle. Uh, and all that water is seeping down into what is a limestone cave and water comes in from all over the place. It seeps inside. So tonight, I think there will be perhaps a little bit of concern that this rain could make a difference. Hopefully it isn't strong enough to really delay the rescue operation. But we, rescuers have been saying, authorities have been saying that they are fully committed to getting the rest of these boys out. This, if anything, is just going to push them to do it more quickly. Yeah, it's a great day, but to underline your point, there's still a lot of work to be done, reason for concern. Nine families worried about their children and also the family, of course, uh, of the coach, the 25-year-old coach who uh, led them into that cave and has subsequently apologized for it. But one reason for hope is that they began, they told us, with the four weakest boys. They wanted to get them out first. And the fact that they were able to take the weakest boys and move ahead of schedule, that has to be a source of optimism. And I wonder if we can get you to talk a little bit, James, since you've been on the scene from the very beginning of this story, about how the mood has shifted over these, in various ways, over the past two weeks. Dan, it's been a real ride. You know, we arrived here very early on to a story where I think probably most of the kind of international types like us came here thinking, could they really find these boys in this enormous cave? We were told how big it was. It goes from here in Thailand, we're in the very northern part of the country, into Myanmar, another country. This cave system is enormous. So the idea that they would even find them at the very beginning was kind of ludicrous. But lo and behold, they did, and they even found them further inside the cave than they had originally anticipated. So there was great euphoria, but then it really did dawn on everyone in the, in the camp just how difficult it was going to be to get these boys out. There was a really, really strong current. We saw images of uh, rescue divers pulling themselves hand over fist along ropes to try to get themselves up that cave five, six hours of diving for very fit, strong Navy SEALs. And then, of course, a few days ago, the sad death of one of those former Thai Navy SEAL rescue uh, volunteers who had spent his time delivering oxygen tanks and air tanks into that cave to allow people to get further down. He ended up dying of a lack of oxygen. So I think at that point, that was probably the lowest it's been since the beginning of this whole situation. Um, so it's a reminder, really, of how much, how difficult this whole uh, process has been, his death. Uh, and yes, as you say, a real, a real ride. But hopefully we're seeing the end of it. But again, I mean, you know, this rain, this is, I think this is really a worry now. Yeah, I can I just the range of emotions that so many have endured and they have to take a break, James, to pump more oxygen into the caves and then they will resume uh, trying to extract the remaining eight boys and the soccer coach. But I just can't imagine what those families, James, thank you. I can't imagine what those families are going through right now. And we want to join Adrian Bankard, who's uh, just outside one of the local hospitals there. We know four boys are at the hospital. And Adrian, what kind of treatment will they undergo once they're at the hospital? Well, the four boys who are here on scene, we know they're on that eighth floor that we were told by officials has been reserved for all 13 who are coming out of that cave. And they will be reunited with family. The ones here, we suspect, already in their mothers and fathers and aunties and uncles' arms. Uh, we do know that they'll be uh, undergoing complete medical evaluations besides what was done already for them in the staging area inside that cave. I mean, all along the way, they've had doctors and nurses and paramedics alongside of them. Uh, we saw from what officials have told us that they had a field hospital there at the cave site. James and Matt have been reporting on that. And then they were transported to an ambulance, which took them to the helicopter, which took them to another ambulance, which brought them right here to this hospital's doorstep. Uh, now, we do know that they'll be checked for infections. Uh, there is a, a cave disease, as it's called, an airborne lung infection uh, that is of concern uh, just from them being inside that cave and the conditions there. The dampness of the cave, being around water so long and then being in the water, uh, there are concerns that they may need to be tested 
tested and treated for any type of bacterial infection as a result of all of that. And just their mental and emotional state, being in the dark that long, throwing off circadian rhythms, uh, being away from their families and friends, being away from a normal routine or exercise. I mean, these are uh, young soccer players ages 11 to 16. Imagine the energy that your son or nephew or cousin has and that they're trapped inside this very enclosed space for two weeks straight. Uh, it was already mentioned that this coach really has been uh, adding to the camaraderie and the hopefulness of the team, really keeping these young boys alive and alert. Uh, but they will be treated if any of them have post-traumatic stress disorder, which doctors have told us is certainly possible where they'll have nightmares or be concerned about being in enclosed spaces or fearful of the dark. Uh, but again, they'll be all treated here on that eighth floor and reunited with their families. And that is a good thing. Paul and Dan. Absolutely, but we can't say it enough. There are eight more children in there yet to be rescued along with their coach. Adrian Bankert outside the hotel in Chiang Rai. We appreciate it. And this image really underscores the poignancy and the team nature of this rescue effort. It's a picture uh, put out on Facebook by the Royal Thai Navy SEALs with the caption, we, both the Thai and international teams, will bring out the wild boar team. The, the team, the soccer team, they're the wild boars. Mm -hmm. We'll bring them back home, hoo The wild boars, eight of them still in that cave tonight. There are 18 divers who participated in today's rescue, 13 foreigners, five Thai Navy SEALs. And so let's go back to Matt Gutman to talk a little bit, Matt, if you would, about what a team effort this is, what an international effort this is. You know, we focus on the divers a lot, uh, and we talk about those 13 divers who physically escorted, or 13 foreigners who physically escorted those boys out of the cave, or at least the first four. But really, this has been a massive Herculean effort by so many others. There are 90 total divers involved in today's rescue alone, 50 of them foreigners. So that's a large number. But also, we've had people from all over the world just physically haul gas tanks, air tanks, all the way into the cave. There are people who have laid rope across. There are communications set up uh, from places like Israel. There are divers from Finland and Belgium and Holland and England and the United States. So it has really truly been an international effort. And one of the things they have to commend the Thai authorities for, they have not been ashamed about asking for help. They have taken everybody in. They have invited us in as if we are their own family. And everybody with whom I've spoken has said that the atmosphere here has been just incredible. So participatory and accepting uh, that they have really, I mean, obviously it's been incredibly difficult work for them, but they have felt like they are part of this Thai family. And just to be able to cap it off, at least with those first four rescues has been tremendous for so many of those involved here. Yeah, the international community is certainly rejoicing. This has been an inspiring and collaborative effort. But Matt, it, it is dark where you are. It's uh, almost midnight in Thailand. And the Thai officials said that they were going to take a break, about a 10 to 20 hour break from extracting the remaining boys and their soccer coach. Can you explain to everyone at home why that's necessary? I think because they had so many people involved in this rescue, it literally was the final push. They threw everything at this they had, but they also expended a tremendous amount of resources. So uh, as James mentioned, there are enormous amount of pumps pushing water out, uh, millions of gallons at a time. Uh, there are divers who are spent, they're tired, and they have literally posted hundreds of air tanks along the route for the divers and their teams around them, multiple, multiple people to use as they go through. And one diver described it to me as like climbing Mount Everest. It is so physically exerting. And today we spent an hour in a cave that was similar to it, minus the water. And, you know, within five minutes, I was huffing and puffing. So they're going through air at a tremendous pace. They've got to build back their stockpile of those air tanks. They're pumping in gas as well, oxygen, uh, to try to make sure that the other boys and their coach are ready for this journey and they probably want to do it uh, without the rain and without all this mud and the darkness so even the people who are in support roles outside the cave don't have to suffer through these conditions as well so the key goal right now was not only to get the boys out but to get them out safely there are so many pitfalls in that cave and i think after today's success they want to take it slowly but again from the start, they told us this could take uh, three to four days, and uh, we hope it doesn't, but I think they are willing to take that time if they feel like they need it.
It's a Herculean task, and the camaraderie, and the cooperation, really the best of humanity on display here. Matt Gutman, our thanks to you and the rest of the team covering this story in Chiang Rai. We want to promise you that here, we here at ABC News will stay on this breaking story, both on ABC News and abcnews.com. We want to return you now to our regular programming, but as I said, our, continuing, our coverage will continue. And again, we will update you here with any more breaking news. And as a reminder, Tom Yamas will have a full wrap-up on World News tonight. Dan and I, thank you for watching. Dan and Paula, thank you. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. We are continuing our breaking news coverage, this miraculous event taking place in Thailand. The rescue effort underway. We have correspondents throughout the region bringing you all of the latest information, but I just want to get you caught up on some of the new details to continue our special coverage here. As you're looking at a map of this region, we got some new information uh, in the last few hours, uh, directly from the officials there in Thailand. And I want to read a quote for you. The regional governor there saying a short time ago, quote, today was very successful, more than we expected. And the reason for that is they actually started moving this rescue operation ahead of schedule. They were able to bring out four boys, and those boys sent to the hospital said to be in good condition, and originally when this plan came together, they thought that there might be periods of time of several hours between when each pair of boys come out. But what we've been told is that the first two boys came out early this morning, Eastern time here in the U.S., and then about 10 to 20 minutes later, the second group of boys came out. So again, four boys total of the 12 on the wild boar soccer team who are in that cave, now in the hospital receiving treatment. Now what's happening right now is there is a bit of a pause in the activity because the rescuers, again, it is nighttime there in Thailand, 11 hours ahead of us here in New York. So it's in the evening, the rain is coming down, and they decided that they needed to replenish the oxygen supplies in the cave. So you're looking at video of those rescuers earlier on going in and out of that cave, and they've done a number of things to make this rescue possible. They actually brought underwater jackhammers into the cave to hammer away at the ceiling so that they could open up more air pockets. Uh, our James Longman was reporting that the rescuers really didn't want to have to have these young boys submerged fully underwater for extended periods of time, so they opened up the cave a little bit. But they decided to rush this ahead of schedule because of that rain, the monsoon that was coming through. This is how the boys got into this situation to begin with. If you'll remember, going back to June 23rd, this was 16 days ago, those 12 boys and their 25-year-old soccer coach venture, ventured into that cave at that time walking in. The water wasn't there. But then the skies opened up, the rain came down, and all the little channels in the earth flooded that cave. And the boys, their exit was cut off. They had to retreat deeper into the cave, about three miles into higher ground, and they had been stranded there for nine days. We didn't know if the boys were still alive. And then those incredible images that we've been showing you when divers found them, all of them alive and in good condition with their soccer coach. So here we are today. It's an incredible task that they are facing, but successful so far, four boys out of that cave, but still a long ways to go, eight more uh, still ahead. Uh, we're gonna bring in some of our correspondents who've been following this uh, around, the, uh, around the world here. First though, we wanna check in with John, uh, excuse me, uh, Admiral Robert Harward. He's a former Navy SEAL former deputy of U.S. Central Command and ABC News contributor, Admiral Harward. Um, thanks so much for joining us on the phone. We wanted to chat with you because you, as a Navy SEAL, can give us some insight as to what is going on inside this cave. Uh, we know there's a bit of a pause right now. Do you have, uh, can you walk us through what might be happening as they replenish some of those oxygen supplies? Yeah, boy, just... Just an amazing event from start to finish uh, for these kids to end up where they were alive and well-being, then to have the search teams find them, and then to start planning and putting together everything to recover them is just unfathomable. Think of uh, you got to fly to the moon. Okay, we had years and years to plan that. This thing pops, and they've got to execute it in a month or even shorter because of the rains. So the Thai leadership has just been tremendous, moving very deliberately 
and with a sense of urgency that this situation dictated. So this pause for 10 hours or whatever it means is very appropriate. They worked everyone hard. They're tired. They have a good plan. The plan worked. They want to go back and make sure now everybody's fresh. All the oxygen supplies have been refurbished. We don't know, but maybe there may have been some issues in bringing out those four kids. So they're looking at, hey, do we need to make this place larger? Do we need to put more lights in here? Do we need to do more oxygen? So just like they've done everything today, very deliberate, very professional, leveraging all the resources, including the international community to support them, just absolutely brilliant. So back to your point and where we are now, this break is very appropriate. They're going to fine-tune the plan, replenish oxygen, get everybody a chance to rest, and they'll push to bring out the other eight and the coach as quickly as they did the first four because now we know they're in a better condition. Everyone's going to be pumped up because they know it's doable. So just brilliant execution by the the leadership here uh, on this very challenging, if not precedent-setting uh, rescue operation. And emotional, uh, the, the hearts of the world really going out to these 12 boys, that soccer coach, and of course all the rescuers who are putting their own lives at risk. Uh, Admiral Robert Harworth, thank you so much for your time. We'll check back in with you later. I just wanted to give a couple quick bullet points here uh, as we're getting the numbers. Today's mission involving 18 divers, 13 foreigners, and five Thai Navy SEALs. Ten of those divers were actually the ones who escorted the boys out. So getting some of the numbers here, and you get a sense of that camaraderie, that teamwork, that international effort. Let's go to our uh, ABC News correspondent, James Longman, who has been there from the very beginning. 16 days, James, you've been out there uh, on this emotional roller coaster. Um, talk to me about what's happening now. You said when you first arrived, there was, uh, for many of the foreigners coming from other countries, there was perhaps a dwindling if, if, little hope that they would even still be alive. And yet here we are, the boys emerging out of this cave. Yeah, I mean, you know, Whit, I mean, you've been to stories as well where you arrive and you think, well, I mean, there can possibly not be any hope really in this. We got here and, you know, we saw the magnitude of what was up against these rescuers. We saw just how big these caves are, how deep, how long they are, how treacherous. You know, this is a cave system here in northern Thailand which stretches into Myanmar, a neighboring country. They're enormous. And for the first few days, rescuers had no idea if the boys were alive or where they were. And, uh, but we were here when they were discovered. And actually they were discovered about three to 400 meters further into the cave system than uh, rescuers had anticipated. That was a great moment when those British divers popped up inside the cave. You can imagine being on that wet, muddy bank uh, where those boys had been waiting all that time in their soccer shirts, the ones that they had been wearing after soccer practice before they went into the cave. Seeing those divers come up in the water, the sense of jubilation, and, and we felt it on the outside of the cave. But then the realization that they had to get out of there and they were in and that last few, uh, those last few cab caverns uh, at the very end of the cave were the, really the most treacherous because we understand the boys had really snuck themselves through some of those holes to get through. And then within two hours of being in there, it had flash flooded and they were stuck. And those little tiny holes were deep underwater. And so then it was down to rescuers to figure out a way of getting them out through those tiny holes in often six, seven, eight feet of water. I mean, extraordinary. And remember, pitch black, often very muddy, virtually no visibility. We spoke to one diver who said it was like swimming through coffee. So it was a real journey. And then just only a few days ago, we sadly lost uh, a former Thai Navy SEAL in the cave on his way back from laying oxygen tanks. He died of a lack of oxygen. And I think it really was at that moment that everyone thought this is actually, these kids are in real danger and they might not get out. And so tonight, I think it's been an extraordinary night because they've gone ahead of schedule. They've got these boys out quicker than they said they would. They started this morning at 10 o'clock local time. They said at 9 p.m. we should see the first boy. And actually, we were stood just outside the cave. And at 7 o'clock, I was interrupted over my shoulder by the ambulances going past me. And it was a wonderful moment. But like you said, you know, we've got a long way to go. And this rain, this rain really tonight, we're all keeping our fingers crossed that it is uh, it is not enough to hamper the rest of the rescue operation. 
because those divers need to rest, they need to replenish oxygen inside those caves, uh, and they need to start again. Uh, let's hope that they're not pushed to doing, doing that before they're ready because of this downpour that's happening at the moment. Our James Longman, uh, incredible reporting your entire time out there, uh, bringing us that insight. Thank you so much. It's important to point out, too, to our viewers that Thailand, and this area specifically, 11 hours ahead of us here on the East Coast. So, again, when he's talking about things happening in the evening there, this was unfolding in the early morning hours here in the United States. So, uh, great news, encouraging news, but still a long way to go. Let's go to our ABC News correspondent, Adrian Bankert, who's been outside the hospital. This is where they've been staging, Adrian, the family members who've been waiting desperately to get this good information about their children. Four boys out, but still eight more in the soccer coach. What can you tell us about what's happening at the hospital? Well, right now it's actually the quietest it's been since we arrived here around eight this morning, our time. So to think about it, we've been out here for about 15 hours or more. Our colleagues, James and Matt, of course, they've been out for days and weeks. But behind us, you can see the roads are completely reopened. There's a little bit of traffic, but it's also almost midnight here in Chiang Rai. Uh, we do know that the hospital is now housing four of those youth who were able to come out safely from that cave. And as we've been reporting to you, they are being treated on one of the floors here. This is a 14 story high hospital. They've reserved the entire eighth floor so that doctors and nurses can be dedicated to the 13 of them, all of whom are expected to arrive here by ambulance. We've seen four of those ambulances arrive with flashing lights, police and military escorts, and we've been monitoring the progress here as again, we're expecting to see the same scene tomorrow after they resume the rescue and recovery efforts up at the cave, which is about an hour's drive from here. They were able to condense the time it would take to transport those young men from the cave by flying them in by helicopter. They first were taken into a staging area inside the cave and examined there. Then a field medic took a look at them again. They were put into an, uh, an ambulance by a paramedic and then transported to a helicopter, which landed just a short way away from here, about a seven minute drive. So we were able to time the arrival of those four ambulances pretty much on cue as soon as they arrived at the helipad at the old airport here in Chiang Rai. Now, this is normally a very quiet town, very peaceful, nothing much happens here. But this is the most exciting. This is the biggest thing to happen in this area. And for much of the world, this is one of the biggest stories of the year, if not the decade, that these youth were even alive at all. Uh, as you've heard reported by James Longman and Matt Gutman, uh, this was somewhat of a miracle to some people's estimates because the fact that they were able to stay alive in such treacherous conditions that alone was encouraging, but now to see that four of them have come out and they're reunited with their families here, they'll be tested for things like infection and, of course, their breathing will be measured. Uh, but we hope to hear more from the hospital and, of course, more after more of the recoveries begin. Back to you. All right, Adrian, thanks so much. Again, we're looking at these incredible images. Uh, this such a special moment in this process when they were able to find the boys alive. You see their smiling faces, the wild boar soccer team in Thailand sticking together and hopefully by the end of the day, uh, within a number of hours, all of them will be out of that cave. Adrian, thank you so much. Again, just to update you, there's a bit of a pause in the rescue effort right now. Four boys removed from the cave, but it's getting into the middle of the night there in Thailand. They are replenishing the oxygen supplies, uh, the oxygen tanks as well, reassessing to make sure they can get the rest of the boys out of there safely. The rain is coming down, as we saw in the live shot of James Longman there, which creates some other concerns, which is why they've also expedited this rescue mission. So we're going to stay on top of this, bring you any new developments on abcnews.com. You can download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. In the meantime, for this special coverage, continuing coverage of the Thailand rescue, I'm Whit Johnson. This is ABC News Live.